Lately, with Rhino Inside Revit, uh, we have been playing around with subcategories uh, within families. And so I wanted to show a little bit today on how that could be used and, and what are some of the advantages of using subcategories in families. So let's uh, start with the Rhino model. And uh, what we have here is a walkway that uh, is done in Rhino. It's meant to be a custom uh, walkway done by a fabricator and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, family in Rhino or I'm sorry in Revit that uh, contains most of this uh, walkway a as a unit that can be uh, uh, drawings can be made of it and uh, it can be sent off to to a fabricator and uh, so we have a, a Rhino model here done with all um, kind of standard Rhino objects uh, the there are some uh, layers and sublayers here, so each one of the the kind of the objects are, are grouped by a layers here, and and those layers are what are going to become the subcategories uh, over in uh, Revit. And uh, so let's take a look at at the uh, definition we're going to use here. Um, this is the definition uh, we're going to use. It 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 uh, it uses um, families, and let me let me go to the Revit toolbar here so what's important to understand about subcategories is that they only exist inside families and so you need to create a new family so we're going to go to uh, this family piece here and you can see that uh, we're going to this is a new component family this is the real key to creating a family uh, in a project and then and then pushing geometry and category information into it uh, you could also potentially open a uh, a family file by itself and then just go directly into it but this is a way that you can create a family uh, with, while you're inside a project another thing that's important to understand is that geometry in a family from Rhino BREP geometry is called a form so you you're gonna create uh, forms uh, which is the geometry uh, from Rhino what's nice about forms is that they cut they're fast they cut really well uh, you know for sectioning and hatching and things like that and there's some limited editing you can actually do in the family editor to edit those forms and, and those give quite quite good advantages over doing for instance a straight direct shape and uh, so this is a this is a great way to to have a more refined model uh, ready for BIM scheduling and and um, situations like that so let's take a look at at this grasshopper definition there's two parts of this um, the the first section of this is the footings so these little footings here those are actually going to be a family in and of themselves and then the rest of the walkway is going to be something else or is going to be a different family reason I did that is that you might have one uh, contractor that is going to get those footings ready and then you'll have the 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 fabricator come out and and install the whole whole rest of the the assembly so um, I use I'm using in this case I'm using a plugin in grasshopper called Elefront uh, it's a great tool to go and search through uh, the kind of objects that are in a file the or in a rhino file uh, you know filter the layers for instance and so I do a lot of that here up front um, and uh, you know you can just download Elefront and get that in there if you want some of these tools. Um, so let's take the top half here. This is the footing piece. Uh, so first of all, I want to find all the B reps in the file, which I do here, and that that pushes all those B reps into this uh, layer filter. And I want all the the B reps that are on the foundation layer, and that's what this is going to filter out. And so I'm going to create a new family here a new component family it's going to have the name of canopy footings it's going to be in the category of structural foundations and uh, here you know I'm getting the structural foundation template and so that creates a new family uh, based called canopy footings obviously now anytime you create a family and you want to insert it you first have to get the type uh, or the types out of the family component families only have one type so we use um, query uh, family types here and so we can grab the family types which is only one in this case and that goes into a uh, add family insert by location so I have I'm gonna do it at zero zero and if I come over here you can see this is add component 
lo by location. So this takes the type and actually creates an instance of it at the location I want. So that's that's the that's how that part works up here. So the rest of the walkway, so that's going to take care of the footings. The rest of the walkway gets a little more complex. And so we're going to go down to the bottom of this definition and take a look at that. Again, I filter for all the B-reps. I come through and now I have a list of layers. Uh, these are the four layers that I'm interested in uh, in Rhino and I'm going to push those in. I'm going to push that into here. So now I get all the geometry broken down by layer um, that I can put um, push down the area here. Now these layers, I also want to translate the names of these layers to what I want the subcategories to be named. So I created a list of subcategories. This is just text, by the way, currently. And then using a key value search, I can take the keys, which are the, the layer names, and I can take the values, which are the subcategories, and then I can search for the layer names. And what will result is a translation of these layer names to the subcategory strings that I want. Okay, So I'm still headed toward a new family but what's different with this one is that I want to subcategorize certain objects. So I have a subcategory uh, creator here and what the subcategory creator does is it, is it will take the strings that I push in here and it will return the subcategory if it already exists. If it does not exist it will create a new subcategory under uh, the main category that I pick, in this case, site. And so what I'm getting out here is a list of subcategories that line up with the geometry I want. And then I can put, uh, using the add, using the component family form, I can add the geometry and the subcategory into here, and this wraps them all together. So now I have form and subcategory associated with each other, that moves into the new family geometry and so what I end up with is a series of objects in subcategories. Uh, this is the standard new family ca uh, creator again so that the overall family is going to be called walkway and it happens to be in the site template because it has it's using the site category. Again just like before I find the type and then I insert the type in this case in the same spot so that it lines up with the footings that I have above. Now this is a trigger here, so this um, just holds this off, holds these off from calculating until I hit this button. So I'll hit that button, and you can see here that it immediately added those objects uh, as I um, planned them to do. Now, when I look at the this here, uh, you can see that I have, it, it came in, it has some different materials on these things. That's because these are all subcategorized. And so I'm going to take a look over here in visibility and graphics. And uh, we go to object styles here. That's, that's the key to, um, in, in Revit, to, to edit your subcategories. We're going we're gonna to expand this so we can see it. Let me see here. If I get down to site, open this up, and you can see here that those those strings that I used now they're subcategories. So now I have subcategories here. I can uh, I can edit their material by subcategory. I can turn them off and on uh, in in different views. Um, I can change how they how they uh, their line pattern and their cut line weight and things like that, um, all within uh, by subcategory. Uh, and so that's uh, those were uh, added by Grasshopper. So that gives us a lot of control. So what that allows us to do here is is if I can come here and I can I can look at for instance I can uh, through subcategory change the line types in the plan for instance of the of the of the objects that I I pushed in there, or uh, you know for for instance here we have uh, different uh, elevation of that uh, of that family. Uh, as I created it and of course I can insert it into a, a larger project if I really want to. But you can see here how I can uh, create a, a family with um, Rhino objects and these are B-reps in this case and I can subcategorize them for further uh, metadata I can add to them or different parameters or I can control them graphically through subcategory.
So I hope that's helpful in understanding how you can organize more of your Rhino information into Revit in a way that uh, works very well for the rest of the BIM project. Uh, thank you.